If you're watching this, there's a good chance you know that I've been working on the Firebase Composables library recently. Um, but I've actually started working on the Sanctum Composables library now. And the reason I'm doing that is because I actually need to use it for something at work, or at least I have to do Sanctum related um, authentication. And so I figured, hey, why not just go ahead and build out this library? I've already know the concepts because I've done it in the Firebase Composables library. And the idea is I want to make the interfaces for the Sanctum Composable library the exact same for the Firebase one. And I've talked about this before, and that basically means that when you use these libraries for something like Quasar, you can then swap out your authentication. And that means that I only need to build the components themselves once. And they all just use, for example, an authenticate, oh, what would you call it? And like an authenticate contract or something like that, an authenticate provider, that's what you'd call it, or an auth provider. And that auth provider could be Sanctum, it could be Firebase, it could be Django, anything and it'll just work. So anyway, let me show you what I've been working on and then we can sort of dig into the code a little bit. All right, so I've just set it up with a dummy account here. Uh, I'm using Laravel Sanctum with Fortify. So this package is going to assume that you are using Fortify. So I can, of course I can sign in. And then straight away, that's going to go ahead and fetch the user. And the reason it fetches the user straight away is part of the contract I'm going to have for signing in is that you end up with the user after the sign in. I might split that up down the line. Um, but the reason I want to do that is because there are a lot of libraries that when you sign in, you get the user back. Uh, and therefore, it would be kind of weird to split them out in that case. But Anyway, so I can sign in, I get the auth state, fetching the user doesn't really do anything because it's refetching them and obviously setting this auth state again. I can log out. And now if I get rid of the password here and try and sign in, I'm going to get some validation errors. And these are all from Laravel formatted the Laravel way, uh, which is really nice. I love the way Laravel formats its errors. So you can easily just, you've got this object and in your code, you can just say, um, validation errors dot password and that'll tell you if you've got validation errors and then you can just grab the first one off or um, iterate over them and display all of the errors when you think about it I had to sort of sit there and think about why they do this it's actually a really intelligent way to deal with validation errors but we also give a little bit of extra um, information as well this is kind of like your, your standard error messaging that you get back so 422 and it's telling us it's an unprocessable entity and so usually like for a lot of other responses you won't get a validation error if there's any other errors that are going on like a 500 in which case this will would come back blank but you still have errors here that you can then show now this is really exciting when you're implementing it with something like quasar because it means basically, um, if you imagine a login form like this, I can show the email errors under here. I can show the password related errors under here because you usually have like a password confirm. Um, but then you can have another space underneath for the everything else errors. And by splitting it up this way, I can easily be like, okay, here's my validation errors. Let's slot them in where they belong. But if I don't have any validation errors, then let's take these errors here and basically show that below. All right, so that's what's going on there. Really, really cool stuff. Of course, I can also log out as well. Oh, I'm already logged out. <laughs> so let's just log in again here. I've got a hotkey for this, I think. Yeah, there we go. And then we can go ahead and log out. All right, let's dig into the code for what's actually happening here. So if we scroll to the top, this is um, basically consuming all of the composables. And I might just go into Zen mode here, close that out all of those out just to make it a little bit nicer for you to view okay so the first thing we do is we want to actually import all of the composables we're going to use uh, since this example is pretty um full i'm using quite a few of them but usually you might just use one or two so this allows us to log in with email of course checking the auth state and that also gives us other stuff like is authenticated um the user itself and what else also also lets us know if the auth is ready and the reason we want to know if the authentication um if auth is ready is later on down the line when i want to handle things like redirects what you can do is use the auth is ready to let you know if um it's ready to basically do a redirect or if i should wait um, for that auth is ready state to change and then do a redirect. And that's for like, for example, if you try to go to the dashboard and you're not authenticated. Anyway, if you didn't understand that, don't worry about it. Then there's also, of course, logging out and fetching the user. All right, so 
with um, use email login, this composable, we actually get a form for free and that gives us an email and password. Um, and then when you log in, it uses um, whatever you've entered with the form. So this is really cool. Uh, for loading, I've set that to logging in since a lot of these other ones use loading as well. Now, obviously you usually wouldn't end up with duplicate loadings here, but um, this is a very, you know, I'm kind of trying to give a full example, which is why I've kind of had to um, ascribe them to something else. And then of course we've got validation errors and errors. So that's kind of the really cool stuff I was talking about before where they're sort of split into validation errors and errors. Uh, logging out, of course, that's a method and you can see if, um, we've got that loading state to see if it's currently logging out because that's, at least in Laravel, that's going to be a request. Um, fetching the user, same kind of thing. Okay, so this all makes sense. And then here, we're basically fetching the user straight away because what I want to do is disable this sign in button if the user's already authenticated. So now if I refresh the page, notice that I get that is actually disabled. That's that's why we fetch the user straight away there. All right, so hopefully you can see this is really nice and simple. And look at all of this logic that we're getting for free from this library. All of this logic here for dealing with logging in, it's, it's all just sitting there ready for you to start using. Same with logout, fetching the user, um, you know, dealing with all states, you can show the user's name in the top right corner, for example, like, you know, stuff like that. And then I've just set some default values here for the form. All right, so now let's actually have a look at the template. Now, and to me, this is the really exciting part. The fact that the template ends up so ridiculously clean. I mean, look at this. You're just modeling the email on the form. It's as simple as that. You don't have to put any other fancy stuff in there. And if you wanted to deal with errors, in fact, let's go ahead and write the code for this. You just do something like this. V-if validation errors dot email. So, hey, do we have any validation errors related to email? Um, and then if you wanted to, you could you could iterate over all of the validation errors, or if you just want to show the first one, which is a very common thing for people to do, you can then just say validation errors dot, and we might have to say dot value there. No, validation errors. Um, let's come in here and just say validation errors dot email zero. And I don't even know if that's going to work. Actually, let's just give it a go. See how it goes. Uh, we'll have to log out here, sign in. There we go. The email field is required. That's how ridiculously easy it was. Like, I, I don't know about you, but in the past, I found it really clunky to do validation error, you know, related stuff. And that's why I've kind of extracted it into its own concept here, because I'm so sick of templates that are absolutely bloated with different error fields and stuff like that. It's just, I find it so frustrating. And so I really think that this, um, this pattern of separating the validation errors is really, really nice. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if other people have done this, but I've honestly never seen anybody else do it before. So hopefully there's other people out there. I'd assume there are a lot. I've just never you know, heard of it. Now you could do something like this. Validation error in validation errors, right? Um, validation errors dot email. So you kind of you'd iterate over all of them. And then we just do something like this. If you want to make sure that you catch all of those errors and just spit out the validation error like that. So how cool is that? And if it were me, I'd actually take all these errors and put them in their own component. So if you had something like this, um, display dash errors, I don't know what you'd want to call it. Uh, and you'd probably just make a self-closing tag there. And then you could just say errors and pass through validation errors dot email. So how, cl how clean is that? Like I I've always wanted to have really nice, clean dealing with errors. And I think that is basically as clean as it gets. This looks really, really nice to me. And especially if you're generating your own forms, being able to do stuff like that, I think is really, really nice. It makes it easy to create like form generators um, rather than dealing with like all that clunky logic. So there we go. The email field is required. That is currently working now. So that's really cool. And I think if I log out, does that, it doesn't reset those, reset those errors. I think when you log in again though, it does. What did, what did I say was my email? So now if we log in again, aha, okay, that's something I need to do. Make sure that those errors get um, reset. Then again, that's probably something you'd handle yourself. Okay, I digress. So that's how easy it is to start dealing with errors. And if you want to deal with passwords related errors, it's the same thing. You just come in here, 
and we just change that from email to password. And this is of course where it would be really nice to abstract this into its own component. And yeah, and then if I got rid of that and tried to sign in again, we'd probably have to log out first, sign in. Oh, the email field, whoops, I did it the wrong way around. Now let's get rid of that. And there we go, notice it does actually reset the errors there when I sign in again, and then um, gives us the new error that the password field is required. Really, really cool stuff. So, you know, this isn't just for Sanctum, I would be, if, you know, this is like a really good pattern to know for the future anyway, for other projects that you're working on. All right, so let's come over here and see what's going on here. Um, basically, I'm dis disabling the button if we are logging in, and this is kind of a chance for me to show off all the logic we get for free. If we're currently fetching the user, we don't know if we're already logged in, and therefore um, we want to disable the button if it's being if the user's being fetched. Um, and I'm jumping into the auth state and saying if the user is currently authenticated, then don't make this login button available to us. And that's why if I come up here and I say sign in, that's now disabled. So that's what's going on here. Really, really basic stuff. Um, well, not basic, but it's, you know, it's basic because of um, all the stuff that this library is doing for you behind the scenes. Now, the other thing is fetching the user. So once again, you've got that loading state for fetching the user, really, really easy to do. And on click, we didn't even have to create our own handler method. This fetch user, we're just like grabbing it directly from there. Of course, if you wanted to, you could then have like a, a function here that is um, um, handle fetch user clicked or I don't know, whatever you want to call that, which would then call um, this this method here just in case you wanted to do something afterwards. But I think it's really cool that you can literally just come straight in here and just plug that method straight in. Like that's really cool to me. All right, and then this is me just like showing all of the stuff that is available to you. And once again, logging out, you literally just call log out. Okay, I've kind of got, I've sort of overkilled this a little bit now, but I'm just like really excited about this. And I'm really excited about this concept. And like once again, the concept that excites me the most is the concept of having an auth provider, something that is agnostic to what you're using behind the scenes. And I want to have something that's really easy. Oh, actually, no, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you before I wrap up this video. Uh, so let's open up our file browser here. Uh, so we've actually got, I've got um, my own implementations here that you get to use for free, which is make fetch requester. All right, so this is all of your, th this is doing your requests using fetch, okay? Um, the fetch API, and this is using the fetch um, utility, what would you call them? Fetch composables from view use, uh, which is really, really nice. And so all of this stuff, logging in, registering, fetching the CSRF token, um, this is all uh, a, something that you can implement yourself and an interface you can implement yourself. So the point I'm getting at is if you're using something like Axios, um, I'll probably build one myself, but let's just say I hadn't had one built. You could come into the requester interface and basically re-implement this requester interface. And then you could use that interface um, so that the requests are being done the way that you want them to be done. So the way that works, and by the way, this is the same for the state. For free, I give you um, some auth state, but if you want, you can re-implement that. If you're using something like Pina, Vuex 4, um, 3, Vuex 4, Vuex 5, or whatever, um, when your Vuex 5 comes out, then you can actually use that instead and basically re-implement um, the use auth state, right? Simple as that. And now how do you actually use that? Well. The Sanctum plugin here, uh, let me just show you where that's actually being used. So this is how you actually use the plugin. I tried to make it as ridiculously simple as possible. So all you have to do is literally just say Sanctum plugin, and that's gonna use a whole bunch of sensible defaults. But then what you can do is pass in some options here that would have, what did you call it? What did I call it? Requester? I kind of remember now something or other. But basically what I'm saying is you can then pass in some options where you give it your own implementation of the requester, or you can give it your own implementation of dealing with putting the user into global state. So I'm really trying to keep this, I'm trying really hard to keep this as flexible as possible, um, but still keeping restrictions on the API 
uh, so that we can then start using this with something like um, with Quasar. And if you wanted to use it with Beautify or any other component, what's the, there's another one called Ant uh, um, UI or something. I, I can't remember what they're all called, but you could basically take any other component library and then create authenticate authentication components that will work with a whole bunch of different authorizers. So you can be like, okay, here's my bootstrap component library. Now that I've implemented those components that will work with social auth, it will now work with Sanctum. It will now work with um, Nest.js. It will now work with Firebase. It'll now work with Superbase. It'll now work with anything that uh, that um, creates an implementation of this um, social authentication um, contract. So I'm really excited. I just think that this is going to be so freaking cool and thank you everybody for like following me along with this journey and hey go ahead and check out the code if you're interested in this kind of thing i'm not sure if it's up yet but i'll put it in the comment of this video um when it is up i might actually just push it now now it is very much a work in progress i've pretty much just got this email sign in page at the moment but if you want to see something that's also a work in progress but um a little bit further on i've got the what did i call it firebase dash this is my documentation for the Firebase Composables. And this is kind of like the starting point for um, the API that I want to build for social auth. You know, the kind of social auth implementations that we'll have down the line. All right, I'm talking too much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this one. And definitely check out quasarcast.com if you're interested in this kind of thing and you want to keep following along with my journey um, of building these. And also, if you wanted to learn about Quasar itself. I've got a whole bunch of videos there that teach you the ins and outs of using Quasar and there are a lot of videos to come. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.